Order up! Welcome to a brand new episode of the Order Up Podcast, wherever you may listen to your podcast. I am Taryn Williams, and on this episode, I want to talk about a subject that is very near and dear to my heart. And I've kind of talked about this with my uncle, my brother, and some of my fam- some of my friends, some of my fans over the past, like over years. And it's should sports video games be released every year? If you checked out the title of this podcast, you know I you know my feelings about this. But I figured before I get into why I feel like hell no nah, is the proper response, we should like kind of go back into history a little bit and delve into this idea a little bit further. So, sports video games come out every single year. And I think it's because since sports happen every year, you want to keep up with like new roster updates, new changes to stadiums, new uniforms, new this and new that. And for a while, it's like, it's, you know, it was kind of okay. It's like, okay, sure. I'll play a new game every year, you know, especially like early back. You think about like late 90s, going to like the 2000s, getting one every year was okay. It was still stupid, but you're kind of like, oh, it's okay. Because I think technology was moving really quickly through those years. But now we're getting to like, you know, the 2Ks and the last like 2K. Like, if think, let's talk about like just NBA 2K, for example. The past few have been almost identical. Like, when we got into, like, the new age, when we got into the Xbox One, PS4 levels of graphics, you know, when we transitioned, then, yeah, you needed a new sports game to uh, bring in, you know, that new generation of consoles. But the past few years, the games have looked all the same. There aren't that many new modes. There aren't that many new updates. There are, like, little things here and there. And basically, it's a roster update with, like, uh, some new paint on it, which is kind of dumb for your paint. And remind you, these games are uh, $59.99, so they're $60 after tax, like $62 or $63 after tax every year. So every year, your basis is getting a roster update, maybe a new career mode in 2K, maybe a couple of other little bells and whistles, and that's it. And so I always felt like, and especially as I got older, I started to realize it's kind of a ripoff if you think about it, you know, for sports games. They don't change that much. They might do some little tweaks here and there, but basically you're just getting a roster update and like a couple of new shiny things here and there. And you're selling that sixty dollars for a brand new game? That's highway robbery if you think about it, like in the long run. So one of my things was I was thinking was what if sports games stopped doing the whole yearly release BS and they started doing like, you know, other games. Maybe every two years. And instead of having a brand new game, you just roster update. And do like, because you can update the game. Come on, games do updates all the time where they add new shaders, they add new like colors, they do stuff all the time with a uh, roster uh, with uh, updates for certain games. So I can't sports the game do that where you release one, let's say 2K20, you know, 2K20 came out this past year. You release 2K20, you don't, re- you don't release 2K21 in 2020, you wait till 2022 and you release. Uh, 2K 2022, yeah. So in 2021, you release the new one. So you skip a year and you release the new one the following year. And you just do like roster updates. Because they do that anywhere where like if a trade happens, because the games, since consoles are always online, do a roster update, bam. If, you know, if a team gets a new uniform, you patch that in. Oh, if this happens, you patch that in. Like you just do that for a full year instead of making people buy. A sixty dollar game over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, which is really stupid. Why not, you know, reward your fans that have been loyal to you, make them buy one game, update it for maybe a full like one and a half, maybe almost two years, then you drop a new one after you guys have really improved graphics, improved this, improved some new ideas, improved like the AI and things like that. I think that would create a much better product. And also, I think it'll also, I think some of the things is competition has been really bad in sports video games, too, where there's only a couple of sports developers now. Before, there used to be, like, a ton. Like, there used to be game developers making sports games all over the place. But now you really only have uh, EA with Madden, 2K with NBA 2K. You got, um, I forget, I forget who makes Road to uh, the Show on PlayStation. We had, like, it will be the show on PlayStation. You have FIFA. And that's really it. Like you don't really have any have the NHL series. I don't think they made a little bit. I don't think they made a new NHL game. But yeah, like you only have so many developers now. You only have like maybe four or five developers making sports games now. 
So the competition nowadays is like really, really lacking. And I feel that's some of the reason why a lot of people, a lot of gamers, myself included, are just tired of the yearly sports games because you're you're not doing anything. You're competing against yourself. You know, it's kind of and it's wearing a lot of gamers. I don't. I haven't bought a sports game in a while. I'll buy. I'll go back and buy an old one before I buy the newest one just because it's stupid. Like I haven't bought Madden in like three years, I think. And before I bought the Madden that I did buy, that it was like a five year gap between those. So it's just like it's insane just how um, sports games in the gaming community are being treated. Just kind of the culture of it. It's just stupid. Like, I honestly feel like if you make one, skip a year. Just do a bunch of free updates, things like that, you know, and then wait another year and a half, then drop a new one instead of having them come out every single year, and you don't really do that much. Like you have a community, you have a fan base. I'm pretty sure an old version of a game can survive for like a year and a half until you drop a brand new one that actually has like an overall like a completely revamped gaming engine or like some really cool things that is deserving of a new title instead of constantly dropping like the same version from last year with, like, a new can of paint. It's kind of stupid. But anyway, this is my take on uh, sports gaming, on the sports games in the gaming community. But let me know what you think. Like, leave a comment on Twitter, Facebook. Like, hit me up on those, Instagram. Let me know what you think. Should sports games come out every year, or should they kind of do, like, what other games do, come out maybe every other year or every year and a half, every two years maybe, and maybe just have updates in between in that time frame while the game is being, you know, revamped and uh, redesigned. But anyway, this is my take on it. Of course, this is my opinion. But anyway, thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Order of Podcast. Definitely check out the podcast on Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Also, you can check out the podcast on SliceandDiceandGaming.com. Also, over on the YouTube channel, Slice and Dice and Gaming Entertainment. Just like how I end on my videos, slicing, dicing, gaming, not just a motto, it's a lifestyle. See you all in the next video on the YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next podcast. Later.